Welcome to this introduction to building game engine experiences with CD Engine. My name is Stefan Arizona of Esri R&D Zurich. I will not go into game engine details here, but this is rather about how to bring your data in from CAD or GIS tools, in this case CD Engine, into game engines. We'll look at a few examples first, uh, then at game engines and how they are well suited for building real-time experiences. We then look into workflows with the typical formats such as FBX, but also newer technologies such as Unreal Datasmith or Unity PI XYZ. And I'll then give an outlook on generative content within game engines and also streaming within game engines. So to start with this example, you see an urban planning scenario here that we modeled in CD Engine, then brought into Unreal Engine, added street lights, uh, building lights, and now we're using this with a camera lift here and cycle through the full day cycle. This is another example of a city engine model brought into Unreal Engine, where we replaced materials and assets with high quality PBR materials and high quality assets from Quixel. Uh, so you can see the model is becoming really detailed, also animated with special effects such as uh, fog on the right hand side. So about game engines and real-time experiences. Why should we use game engines to build real-time experiences? First, what are real-time experiences? They are used case specific applications which focus on story. They have an intentionally fo limited functionality. They require real-time UI UX. They are content centric and very graphics intense. And they need to support a variety of presentation modes, including VR and AR. These characteristics make them a good match for game engines. In this example, you see the CD Engine VR experience. The user starts at the virtual planning table where he or she can look at uh, urban models that are brought into the game engine. One can zoom around, rotate, uh, look at different options. So we have different scenarios here. Daylight can be manipulated. And because this is VR, of course, you can also jump into the city and look at your models from within with the same functionali functionality for uh, changing daylight, changing the scenarios. You can jump to different viewpoints. So let's continue with a few observations on game engines. Game engines are really great for building real-time 3D experiences for AEC and GIS applications. They have become an established tool for real-time visualization. They also provide most of required features that are uh, needed for that, uh, for instance, for AR and VR, so VR navigation, all the controllers that you need out of the box. However, the problem with game engines is that they are heavily specialized on graphics performance. So if you want to build experiences with special requirements, you will typically have to dive into coding. 
And there exist a few limitations when it comes to CID and GIS data. Let's look at these. Um, traditionally, game engines work in a local coordinate system and are not able to cope with georeferenced systems. That means your data first must be transformed, typically centered, before it's important. Game engine uh, floating point uh, precision is typically only 32 bits, which means that your extent must be within these limits, otherwise you're going to get graphic artifacts. Um, and then getting the data into the engine is not an easy thing. Um, there are incompatibilities with fa uh, uh, file formats, there are file size limitations, and so on. And this we will, what is what we will look at in a little bit more detail uh, in the workflow section. So getting GIS and CAD data into a game engine can't be that hard. Is it really that complicated? If you look at this here with a number of CAD tools, um, visualization tools, modeling tools, you see there's a number of formats and there's a variety of, of workflows data going back and forth. So yes, it is quite complicated. So the classic option to import data into a game engine is FBX. FBX is typically well supported by Unreal Engine and Unity and also other game engines. Uh, 3D modeling and CAD tools often provide FBX exporters. So in theory, this should all work nicely. However, in practice, it's typically quite messy. Everybody is probably has working with FBX or similar formats has seen artifacts like that. It's not just FBX, as I mentioned, it's also other formats which have these problems. Where do they come from? We have incompatible format versions, non-standard formats, problems with mesh and material handling, problems with handling large models, unknown origin of the source data, and so on. So the game engine manufacturers have, become up, have come up with new technologies for streamlight data transfer. For instance, Unreal Datasmith is a format which allows external tools to export data in exactly the form that the Unreal Engine wants to consume it. Similarly, for Unity and the external tool PI XYZ is, you can take Revit or other CAD data uh, into PI XYZ, which prepares then the data and feeds it into Unity. In addition, there's a so-called data prep which allows you to transform your data on import so it fits the engine. That means you can basically hook into the engine's import process to filter, optimize, replace, enrich your data. In Unreal Engine, you do this using scripted or visual data prep. In Unity, you can write uh, custom import scripts or by using PIXYC. So how does this work together with CD Engine? Here you see CD Engine in the center for consolidating various external data sources. So we can have FBX imports, we have uh, import map data, we can sync from ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Urban, get all this into a CD Engine model and then export using FBX or the DataSmith impor importer uh, to bring it into Unreal Engine or Unity. So let's have a look how this works in practice. Here we have a CD Engine model for a design of different street variants. On the left-hand side, a number of lanes. On the right-hand side, the same street with added uh, cycling routes. Um, so basically two scenarios within CD Engine. Um, when we bring these into a game engine, uh, we first replace preview materials with high quality Unreal Engine PBR materials. So we have much simpler materials on the CD engine, which are then replaced during the data prep process with uh, high quality materials. Similarly, we can use um, the replacement process to replace uh, placeholders with uh, high quality Unreal Engine assets. In this case, we have like these vertical plants on the building here and then use the Unreal Engine foliage system for high performance graphics output. So after we've done that, there these replacement processes we, we get within the 
engine, we already get a very high quality and realistic imagery, as you see in this example. So finally, for an outlook. Um, with the growing popularity of game engines for non-games, the engine companies are increasingly interested in GIS data. So we can expect that the limitations that I've been talking about will be enhanced, the engines will be enhanced to better handle GIS data soon. Um, also, we will see integration of CAD and GIS enabling software di directly in the engine. Uh, one example is uh, one technology of our own here to bring generative content directly into Unreal Engine. Uh, it's called Vitruvio. It's about generating content within Unreal Engine using the CD Engine SDK. So you see in this video here that we have a CD Engine model with all the attributes and we just can go basically within the Unreal Editor and manipulate these attributes, for instance, change the building height, uh, change the number of windows we want to have, and the building is regenerated on the fly. Another example is streaming. So, we've, so far, we've seen that we've basically been working with an offline process. So we bring GIS data, CAD data for in an external tool, such as CD Engine, then export all the data into a file, re-import it into the game engine again. As these models are getting bigger and bigger, um, an alternative technology is actually to stream the data over the network directly into the game engine. And this is what the ArcGIS Maps SDKs for game engines do. You can tell amazing studies using GIS, but if you combine GIS data with the power of a game engine, you can take these studies to the next level. This is our second product, and I'm going to show you a simulation of the fires that took place in Australia using a real engine. This animation shows all the locations of the fires during the month of January. The fire locations are coming from a feature service in AGS Online. This may look like a typical GIS uh, application that we could build today, but to understand the real impact on the fires, we can use the visual and storytelling capabilities of Unreal Engine. Let's start by changing the base map. The combination of using a imaginary base map and clouds generated by the game engine give us a more realistic view. Let's, you can use Unreal Engine to attach particle systems to our GIS data to better represent them. In this case, adding, adding a smoke coming from the exact location set in our feature service in AGS Online. Now, you can have a better idea of how the impactful the fires were on a global scale. The smoke was visible from the space station and even covered a grand part of New Zealand. Moving closer to the Starland coast, we were able to see the devastating consequences of the fires, with the smoke blocking the sun for a large part of the country. Using the API, you can move the camera for the smooth camera animations, but at any time, you can interact with the scene. Finally, for a very immersive visualization of our data, we can move to the ground level and take a look to a single feature point. The true power of Unreal Engine comes from the ability to render high-quality walls. GIS is no longer bound to static maps. GIS can live in real time. And yes, now the room is on fire. So this is it for my presentation, and we are ready for a Q&A. Thank you for your attention.